Guess what folks, bought another new tent. Thank you for buying this tent, I hope you enjoy using it. Thanks David. So as you can see it's a Crux X1, it's actually the X1 Assault. So I bought this as a lighter I think, alternative X1 Assault as you can see there, to my Rab Summit and the Black Diamond Vestibule. It's all built in as one in this tent. It also comes with a fairly chunky footprint, I have to say that weighs quite a lot. We'll, get, we'll weigh these and see how they look. So without checking the contents at the moment, the thing is about 1.9ish, just under 2. So 400 grams lighter than mine with the vestibule, but slightly heavier if I wasn't carrying the vestibule, which you don't have a choice on this one. And the footprint appears to be 300 grams. So it looks to be brand new, or virtually brand new. I know it's been pitched for photos, but it doesn't look like it's been used. Some fairly chunky DAC poles, of which there's three, uh, 8.5mm, I believe. Four guy lines, a selection of pegs, titanium, and what looked like the equivalent of DAC V pegs, and a pole repair tube. And the tent itself, which is single skin, breathable, with a carbon infused coating. So let's get it up and get a look at it. So you can see at the front here, it's got a super light Dyneema porch built in. But let's get the first two main poles put in to start. Just thread through and across. Pole sleeves seem quite slippery, so it's not it's not sticking like the old X1 raid that I used to have. So they've definitely improved that design. You can see the X shape there for the main two main poles. So far, so good. Now I need to get inside and get the third pole, which is the internal one, into place. This could be the interesting bit. I suspect this might be a wee bit of a fan. So you can see the poles go into these ends on either side. I'm just going to try and fix it all in place. strips here. Um, so it's a wee bit dark because of the fabric is so thick but you can see the pole stretches across down into place across the apex and down into there it's got a centre waterproof zip on the vestibule and then we just need to peg out the two corners I just use titanium for these at the moment. Presumably goes right there. And one here. Nope. Undeniably quite a sexy beast. I haven't got the side guys out yet and I've noticed now that we're four pegs short. I don't think it comes with any more pegs, you just have to allow for four more to do your corner guys. So I'll go and grab them and we'll get them in place. So luckily I've got four carbon core chunky pegs that I can use to do the guy lines because they'll take a lot of stress. So we'll get the guy lines tied on and get it in place. So last one tied on. Right, last peg. There we go. It has a stiffened vent at the rear here, which you can you can just see it's got a polyester DWR coated panel on it. You can unzip, and you can tie in there for a relay on a rock face or a mountain face. And the two the two guys are equalising, so only one peg point, but it should take the stress on two different points on the pole. I don't know if this gives you an impression of just how thick this upper fabric is. The fly is like, I think I'll check for you, 70 denier. 
uh, 10,000 mil hydrostatic head. So it's by nature very quiet, it's not like Silver Nylon. So, one Thermarest Neo Air inside. I'll show you that in a second. There's definitely room for the second one. It's 120 wide, I believe, which is okay. Um, I wouldn't use it in summer for me and my wife. It's a bit narrow, probably, but as a solo, very luxurious. And you can also see it just at the peak of the tent here. There's a loop for attaching a head torch. And then here's your little vent here, which you can unzip to let air in or to pull a rope through. Let's check it for headroom. I'll put this Velcro back up just now. Yeah, so it's yeah perfectly good, actually. At the front, it just makes it a lot more usable in terms of head height, shoulder space, and being able to cook. We'll close this up and just see how small it is once it's closed and see if there's enough room for cooking. So this will give you some idea. Again, these crux tents, especially in black fabric, I think, and lightwave, they're very dark inside. Good for a night's sleep, but quite cave-like. It only features two pockets at the front, so there's one on either side, triangular. Um, a bit bigger than the previous cruxes I've had, so you will get more gear in it, but I still don't think it's as good as having a square pocket that hangs down like the black diamonds and the rabs. So there's an interesting wee detail at the top of the roof zip here, uh, the vestibule zip. This all opens this velcro here so you can create an extra vent for cooking or for airflow, or you can just velcro it back together again and seal it off, but it's a waterproof zip and it's also two-way which will help from a breathability and a ventilation point of view. I'm pleased to say the vestibule is deeper than I thought. So actually in terms of cooking, controlling the heat on your stove or any flare, you've got enough room and your pack will sit down towards the bottom there or to one side. So yeah, that's actually better than it looks in the pictures. One thing I would say in snow is I think you'll get quite a lot of spin drift trying to get in. So you'd maybe want to just build a wee snow wall around the sides here. In terms of specs, I'll just tell you. So it's 10,000 mil hydrostatic head, polyurethane carbon um, coated to soak up uh, moisture and then it releases it through the fabric in due course. So we'll see how that works. It tends not to work on the taping, so you tend to get wee water driplets on the pole or on the tape side, but the fabric itself has been very good in the past. The ground sheet is also 10,000 mil hydrostatic head. Uh, poles, 8.5 mil, as I say, three of them, DAC, uh, Featherlight NSL, uh, 120 mil wide. So yeah, I prefer 127 to 130 upwards for two of us, but for one it's palatial, so perfectly good. In terms of the ambience inside, well, it's quite spacious because of the extra head height at the front. Um, quite dark though, but the funny thing is that you've got this polyester door which has a no seal mesh third on the top there, but you cannot seal it, which I'm kind of intrigued by that because for a four season expedition tent, There'll be circumstances where you want to just completely close that, I would think. That may need a mod in the future, or I may be, I may be worrying over nothing, but anyway, we'll not know until we test it in some pretty frigid conditions. Also like the way you can exit without opening the door from the front or from the bottom. So you get out in snow when it's lying quite deeply and step in and out more easily. I also didn't mention it's got a snap buckle for the bottom of the main door to stop zip creeping storms and high winds and they are very chunky, probably the biggest I've seen actually on any tent. So there you go, that is your Crux X1 Assault, roughly about £800-£900 retail, I managed to get this about 30% less, so I'm pretty happy with that. We'll see how this goes, Storm Eunice is coming in tonight, we're expecting, they say, anything up to 30 centimetres of the snow and I'm hoping to hit uh, Trossachs National Park tomorrow. So I'll be trying this out and I'll do a wee follow-up video and tell you how that got on, hopefully, in some decent snow and some fairly high winds. So thanks again for watching this wee unboxing. Any questions, just give us a shout. I know there's very little material online about this tent, which is partly why I really wanted to get a hold of it, um, because it did intrigue me. But uh, yeah, it looks lovely. I'm really liking it on first impressions.